Welcome to ClayShareCon Day 3. With, this is actually the last demo we have for Day 3. Uh, it's a little sad, but it's not because it's going to be an amazing demo with Michael Harbridge from Learn Fired Arts. And he is going to share some new clay puzzling methods with us. If you're not familiar with Michael or Learn Fired Arts, go on over to learnfiredarts.com and check out what he has. He has a whole bunch of really amazing supplies and great educational resources. Um, he does workshops, live broadcasts, tutorials. Ega does it all. So if you aren't familiar with him, again, check him out. All right, so let's go see what Michael's working on today. Hey, Michael, how are you? Good, Jessica. How are you guys doing? We are great. We're so happy to have you here with us for ClayshareCon. Again. Yes, thrilled to be back. I know. And yes. you're past the halfway point now, so. We are. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we are. <laughs> and the cocktail hour is after this, so that's good actually too. we have to. We had to reschedule the cocktail hour to Sunday because oh. that was to go with the after party, and the after party was an outdoor raku firing. And it's snowing, so oh, so we are going to do it Sunday though. It's happening Sunday. All right. Well, it'll so be the good cocktails on come too. Sunday. Just gotta wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we're excited to learn the new clay puzzling method. Yeah, and I'm excited to show it. Um, I've got so many ideas in my head and it's finding time to, to actually turn these things into reality. And um, we've got some new cone shapes. A lot of you got the, the narrow cones and we've got a new series of wide cones that we're coming out with. So um, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do this adorable little gnome bunny. And then back behind me, you can kind of see the leprechaun and he's still in the clay stage and I'll lift him up here and we're going to try to do both of these kind of at the same time today. And if you didn't see him on my Facebook post, this is the leprechaun gnome and he's still drying, waiting to get fired and then I can play around with finishes on him as well. So there's lots of things you can do on these cone shapes and, and I got tons more in my head of things that I want to do. So. We will get started. I'm going to set this funny aside here. Um, I've got the, the cones already kind of prepped. And so what I've done is these cone shapes have, um, they're ceramic. And so we wrap them with a layer of newspaper because it makes it really easy to slide the clay off of the cone. It'll come off of the cone because it is earthenware bisque, um, but the paper just makes it a whole lot easier. And just to give you guys an idea, some of you had gotten the other cones that we had. And like, this is the, the medium-sized cone that we had. And this is the new, wider, medium-sized cone. So it's, it's quite a bit wider, a um, little bit taller. And we go up to a really big 24-inch one here in the corner that'll be coming out. And these will also have the foot on them like our original ones. These are just the prototypes that I'm, I'm working with and the molds will go into production really soon. And we anticipate probably starting shipping on these around the, uh, the end of March. So, so I've done the newspaper on the cone, I've wrapped it with paper, and I usually use like masking tape just to kind of tape the paper on. I'll tuck any extra paper that I have underneath the cone inside. And then I do my slab of clay over the top of this. And depending on the size of the cone determines the thickness that I go with. So, um, some of these will be thicker, the bigger they are, the thicker I'm gonna go. Generally, I probably go with about a half an inch slab of clay over the top of the cone. And I'm gonna flip this camera down now so you guys will be able to see a little bit better what I'm actually doing on the piece. Um, so I've, I've put that on there. I've taken just a flexible rib and I've kind of worked that to smooth out any bumps or anything that I've got on the cone. And I'm not worried at this point about this being really super smooth. Um, the, the next thing that you want to determine on here is where you want the rim of that hat to be. So on the bunny gnome, we've got, get him down here. We've got the rim of his hat here. And so what I do is I add a coil of clay where the rim of the hat is going to be. And normally on the gnomes and on the, um, the bunny gnome, I usually do a coil of clay that I say is about the thickness of my, my finger. And so it doesn't need to be a perfect coil that's rolled out um, 
you know, this way or done with an extruder, I usually just kind of pinch the clay. I make that coil and then I determine where I want that to be, how far down on the cone I want it to be. And I'll just take and attach that coil and I'll go all the way around. A lot of times I'll kind of go a little bit at an, at an angle as I go to the back. In this case, I've got one piece of a coil. I would add another coil to this wrapping around. The difference between the bunny and the um, leprechaun is instead of a coil like this that I would use on the bunny or a normal gnome, I'm going to go with a wider cone because we're going to then pull that out to make it the rim of the hat on the uh, leprechaun. So this coil is going to be about three times that thickness. So I've got a coil about this size that I'm going to take and I'm going to wrap around kind of wherever I want the rim of his hat to be. And I can add on to that if that coil isn't quite big enough. And I'm not worried about scoring and slipping this because what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna take my finger and I'm going to go like this and I'm gonna mash this clay up into the top of the hat. Now this piece is still on the cone. And the reason I leave it on the cone at this point is because I'm pushing and creating a lot of pressure as I press this into the top. And if I didn't have it on the cone, there's a good chance I'd be denting that clay in and um, having some problems with the piece wanting to collapse. But I'm not gonna leave it on here for a whole lot longer. So I'm just gonna work to kind of mash that clay in. I'm not worried about this being perfectly smooth at this point. We'll go back and smooth out imperfections and things later on. So on my bunny gnome, I've just got the small coil. I squish it in on the top, gives the illusion of the, the rim of the hat. On the leprechaun, I'm going to take and I'm going to pinch this to extend this out to be the rim of the hat. I've done witches this way. You can go back. I've done some, some videos on doing witches. They're done kind of the same way where the rim of the hat on the witch's hat is pinched out. And then I'm going to take <clears throat> my needle tool and I'm just going to run this around and kind of trim off and get a little bit of a smoother edge for the edge of that leprechaun's hat. And just set that clay aside. I can go back and kind of smooth this, but again, I'll go back and do the smoothing once I've got um, everything else done on here. The, um, and so at this point, I can pull this off of the cone because I'm done creating a lot of that pressure. So to remove it from the cone, I just flip it on its side. I pull out the excess paper and I kind of slide my hand in and I kind of take my hand to kind of a, a cone shape and I go inside the cone and I'm gonna do kind of a twisting motion. Once I wedge my hand in there, I kind of twist and slide that cone right out. This one, the prototype cracked, and but it still is working for me. And then I can take that excess paper and I can tuck it up inside. If I'm worried about the paper, the paper will burn away in firing if I don't remove it. But if I wanna remove the paper, I can just take and kind of twist it like this and I can remove the paper. I like to kind of tuck that up inside because it does give a little bit of support while I'm working on this guy. So Michael, what is the diameter of the base of the cone you're working with? So this cone measures, and I knew somebody would ask that, and I, I measured when I put them up on the website, and I quick grabbed the tape measure before we went live. This one is a small cone. This one measures 13 inches high, and this one is six inches wide. Where the original small cone, just to give you perspective on these, this is the original small cone, which is seven inches high in comparison. So this, the new small wide one is quite a bit bigger. The next cone up from this one, the wide one is, um, let me measure here quick. That one is 19 inches high by seven inches wide. And the large one is 24 high by um, about 10 inches wide. And so I've got ideas of a lava tree. I've got working on a poinsettia tree. Um, lots, of, lots of different ideas for these. 
So the leprechaun I'm gonna set aside because we're gonna work on him um, as time permits with this. The main focus is gonna be on the bunny. So I've got the bunny all prepared off of the cone. This one I'm doing on the medium cone. So it's a little bit larger. I've got the rim of my hat here. I've got that pressed up um, here as well. And I'll lift this camera up a little bit more to catch the top on here. So at this point with the bunny, I want to work the top of this. And so I don't want to just go like this and bend it and snap the top off. But what I want to do is I want to kind of pinch and pull at the same time. So I'm doing lots of little pinches like this as I pull it and kind of stretch that top out. Don't just bend it because you'll snap that off. And you can twist this around to be however you want the top of that hat to be on your bunny. You can twist it around a lot more if you want or a lot less. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a piece of clay and I wanna create his nose. So his nose is here and it's um, kind of a triangular shape but rounded on the top. So I'm going to just take my piece of clay and work that into the shape that I want. Round it at the top and I'm gonna kind of pinch it in to be kind of triangular at the bottom. I keep wanting to go down lower where I've got better light. <clears throat> And then I'm going to determine where I want to put this on my bunny. And so it's probably going to go underneath his, his hat here. I'm going to score the back side of that. I'm going to score the area where that will attach. I've mixed up some slip here using the same clay body. I'm working with a, a mid-range buff stoneware. And so I've mixed up some, some slip here. And I'm going to attach that. And as I place that, I'm going to kind of wiggle it back and forth to make sure that that attaches well. Then I'm going to use um, a clay extruder. There are different clay extruders on the market. This is one that's made by Nidic Shimpo. And I like this one because it comes with what I call the spaghetti die. And if you don't have this particular extruder, I do sell these on our website um, individually and you can get that spaghetti die and it will fit pretty much most extruders on the market, the Scott Creek, the, the Kemper, um, all of those should, it should fit all of those extruders. And to load that extruder, I'm making a coil of clay. If you haven't used one of these, make a coil of clay on the extruder itself. You've got um, this little lever here that you need to press in and then you pull this plunger out, which may be a challenge with me standing trying to hold it in the camera. So I want to pull that plunger out as far as I can so that on the inside that plunger goes back. Once I've got that pulled back, then I'm going to drop that coil of clay inside, squish it down, rip off any excess, and then the die goes inside the little threaded piece that goes on the end and that screws on. When you go to use the extruder, um, a lot of people hold it like it's a gun, which makes sense, and they squeeze the trigger this way. Sometimes I find that if I actually do it upside down, I get a little bit better leverage. If you really struggle with this to get your hand around that extruder to squeeze that trigger, sometimes if you've got smaller hands or you have arthritis, that can be a challenge. I'll actually take and put this on the table, and then I stand up, and I put my whole hand on here and I press down and I get really good leverage so that I can get the coils out. I usually wrap my hand around the end of the extruder so it prevents the clay from kind of sticking to the edges and it goes over the top of my hand. And then I extrude out my clay, I rip it off and I'm gonna set a bunch of these aside. And this is gonna be the hair on the front of our bunny. Now there are other, yeah. oh, go ahead. I, I just was gonna ask, we had a few people ask how long it takes for these pieces to dry before you bisque fire them. 
I usually let the pieces dry for about a week. And um, a lot of times after a week, I set them on top of the kiln to um, heat up and, and dry even better. Um, I've also got digital kilns that after a week, I'll put them inside the kiln and I'll do like a soak on there where the kilns, the, the newer digital kilns, you can program a preheat on there for a certain number of hours. If I've got a really full 28 inch kiln, I'm probably gonna do a 12 hour soak on there. It goes to about 190 degrees and holds for 12 hours. And that way I'm sure that my pieces are dry because once we put these layers on here of the hair and things, you're getting kind of thick on there. So you wanna make sure it's dry. You don't want these pieces popping or blowing up when, when they get fired. So now I'm gonna add my, my beard on my bunny. So I'm gonna score the whole area where I plan to add this. And then I'm, I'm gonna take my slip and I'm gonna dab some of that on the area where this is going to attach. Just do a little section at a time. And then I take that end of the clay where I kind of pinched it off and I take that and I tuck that up under his hat and then bring that down. Now on most of the gnomes, um, I was kind of bunching it up as it went down so that it wasn't quite as straight, but on the bunnies, I kind of like it that it's a little bit more straight going down. And I wanna make sure too that these coils are pressed against the piece really well. Um, I don't want coils sticking out because when you go to pick these up to move them, a lot of times you just tap a coil that's sticking way out and it wants to pop off. So I kind of take my hand and go over and press those coils down to make sure that there isn't like a big gap underneath them that will make it easy to snap those off. And I'm just gonna to continue to add this hair. Since I'm Michael, do you mind off. sharing what clay you're using? So this is, I, I always encourage people to order or pick up locally if they can. And so I work with, I'm in, in central Wisconsin and Continental Clay happens to be um, a, a good friend and they are in the Minneapolis area. And so I'm working with their buff stoneware. It's a cone like six mid-range clay, um, fires out a nice light buff color. Gonna reload the extruder. Shoot out some more bundles of clay here. When you do these in workshops, your arm gets really sore, squeezing out lots of coils. And that's why a lot of times I end up going like this on the table. It's good exercise for building muscles, but all right, we're gonna continue to add these coils. When I get down to the bottom, if I have a lot of extra coil at the bottom, I will just kind of tear off that excess and kind of tuck those coils in there. We're gonna go back later and we're gonna kind of press in along the bottom, any coils that are sticking out on the bottom. But for now, I'll just rip off any excess that happens to be there. Gonna add one more bunch of coils here. All right, so we've got our hair on there. Now on my little guy, I poked some holes in his nose so that um, I could do some wire in there. So I took the needle tool and I just poked some little holes in the side. And then I want to make some ears for our bunny. And so I'm gonna take just a slice of clay and I'll take just a wooden tool or a needle tool and I'll cut out 
one bunny ear shape. And then I'll take that and I'll lift it up and I'll lay it on top of the slab of clay and cut out another one following that and using that kind of as my template so that the ears are about the same size. And then I'll take and just kind of pinch along the edge of that to kind of taper the edge of the ear going down both sides. And then I kind of take and I pinch it up a little bit so that the ear, kind of the sides come up a little bit. And then I take my scoring tool and I scratch some lines for texture inside the ear. Do that in both of the ears. Michael, how much clay do you think you'll use for this piece? On this piece, um, so I started out with a new block of clay doing both of these pieces. And I have used about a half a block so far. So by the time I'm done with this and I add the arms and the hat and things on the leprechaun, um, I'm going to say that I probably will use three quarters of a, a block of a 25 pound block of clay between the two of them. So on this bunny, this is the medium cone that I'm working with on the bunny now. And I will probably have um, probably about 12 to 15 pounds of clay in him when he's done. <clears throat> All right, now on the, the hat, I'm gonna flip this camera up a little bit here. So on his hat, I wanna determine kind of where I wanna put the ears and um, I'll just take and I will mash the bottom of this ear into the hat. Again, I don't need to worry about scoring and slipping because I'm actually squishing this right into the hat. And then I will go on to the other side. This is really challenging, keeping it in the camera while actually seeing this. I'm just gonna spin it here a little bit, all right. So I can add this ear, doing the same thing. Michael, how thick are the ear slabs? The ear slabs are about the same thickness as I made the cone itself. I always try to keep the clay, the thickness of everything that I add on close to that same thickness. So it's probably between a quarter to a half an inch thick on that slab of clay. And so I can play around with these ears and I can leave them up straight. I can kind of bring them out to the side like this a little bit, which is kind of how I like them. If I'm going to attach them more on the back side, then I can go back there and I can score and add a little bit of slip and really kind of squish that ear in there. And I can kind of, you know, bend it around and give it as much character as I want. I could actually have one of the ears bending down if I wanted. So I can attach this one and I could actually take this ear and, and have it coming down even more. Just give it as much character as you want. I'll lift this camera up a little bit here so you can get a better view of the ear. So, you know, play around with this. Clay's flexible. Position those ears how you want them. And then the next thing to do on here is to make the feet. And so that's just taking some clay and rolling them into a ball. And then I can decide kind of where those will be positioned. This guy out of the way so we don't have his head blocking that camera. And I can decide where these are going to go. And I can kind of elongate these a little bit down in that camera. Poor Kevin's trying to keep up probably with which camera to <laughs> have showing as I'm moving around here. So I might elongate them a little bit and I will take my scoring tool and I will add texture to them as well.
We'll score on the back side where I'm going to attach them. I will score. I will add some slip. I will wiggle that little paw into place. Do the same thing with the other one. A little slip. Score where it's going to attach. And wiggle that on. Now along the bottom here on the beard, I had mentioned, I usually go along because little pieces sticking out on the bottom here are just asking to get broken off. So I'll usually take a wooden tool and I'll just kind of go along the bottom and kind of go in at an angle and I'll make sure that those coils are pressed against on the bottom. And it also creates a little space between the bottom of the piece and the bottom of that hair. Because if that hair goes all the way down to your, your surface or your board, when you pick him up and you go to move him to load him in the kiln or do anything with him, there's a good chance if you set it down a little bit on that edge, you're going to break off some of those coils. So that just creates a little bit of space. And then I go back and I kind of repress all of that beard area to make sure that there aren't coils sticking up anywhere. And then the next thing that I do on there is I create some little paws. And so there too, I usually start out with kind of a coil of clay. And I will take and I will kind of determine how big I want that paw to be. And I will cut this in half, but I keep in mind that I want a little bit of extra clay there so that I can insert it inside the side of the bunny. So these bunny paws are pretty easy to do because um, it's basically just kind of a rounded coil of clay. I'll use my thumb to kind of smooth this. I can add texture to this if I want, but then I will actually taper get into the right cam. Okay. I'll taper the end of this, just kind of pinching it and pulling it a little bit longer because I want to poke a hole in the side of the bunny and insert this, slip it and insert it into the side. So I'm gonna do that with both of those, round off the end of this one, taper this end. And then I just use the wooden tool to go and decide where I want that paw to come out. And I kind of poke that in and act like it's a drill and drill through and make a hole in both sides where those arms are going to go. Add some slip, insert it in the hole, give it a little twist. Um, if the slip is oozing out, I'll take the brush and kind of brush that away. Do the same thing on the other side. If you make really long paws coming out on there, you may need to put something under it to support it, some sponges, some crumpled up paper, something to support it while it dries. And then I can take and I can kind of pinch these so they don't look like logs sticking out on the side. I can kind of pinch these and bring them around. And I was gonna do a little basket in one hand, and then I did a carrot in this hand on this guy in this camera. Um, I actually had two carrots for this and I didn't glue them on. And before I went live the other night, I put some sticky foam behind them and the foam didn't stick on the one and I picked it up and the carrot fell and broke off. But I did have two carrots on here. So I'll show you guys how to do the carrots. They're really simple. It's just taking kind of a coil cone shape of clay And carrots aren't perfectly smooth, so you don't need to sit and roll this so that it's a perfectly smooth coil. But I just kind of bring it to a point on the end. I will give it a little bit of a twist. And then on top, I will round this off a little bit. And then I'll kind of drill into this with my tool. I'll put some slip inside there. And then I take a little bit of clay from my extruder. 
squeeze that out, pinch it together at the base, taper that so it'll fit inside that opening on the top of the carrot, insert it, give it a little twist, and I've got the little foliage for my carrot. I can kind of bring those coils out a little bit. Again, I don't want a coil sticking way out like this because there's a good chance that'll get broken off. So I'll usually kind of pinch them together a little bit and I've got my carrot and then I can kind of stand that up alongside my bunny. I'll move this camera up a little bit here. Kind of stand it up on my bunny. I don't usually attach these. I say I don't usually, I've made one of these already. It's like, I make it sound like I've made a dozen of these. Um, I wouldn't <laughs> normally attach this. I would just kind of determine the, the angle and the bend that I'm gonna have on it. And then I'll just take that and set that aside. And that basically is um, the bunny. And then I did the finishes on this. I did um, Mako, I use stroke and coat on here. Let me move the clay bunny out of the way and I'll talk a little bit about that. And then I think we've still got time that we can get the uh, leprechaun done as well. Yeah, we have 12 minutes. So yeah. I know you can make that. I oh, know yeah. you can make I'll a make leprechaun. So I did on, on finishing this guy, I did Mako stroke and coat. I think this was jaded I used on the hat. I did a wash of gray. I thinned down gray stroke and coat gray hair, ironically, was the, the, the gray that I did. And I did kind of a wash in the beard and on the ears and the paws and the feet. And then I went back and I just kind of skimmed across the top, going across the texture with white stroke and coat. And so it just kind of the white hit the highlights. I did that on the ears, everything. The inside of the ears was melancholy, was like a perfect, I think it's SC2, was a perfect color for the pink for the ears, the nose, and for the back on here was the melancholy. Um, the carrot, I forgot to actually glaze when I fired this, and I wanted to get it done. So I went back and did just acrylics on the carrot so I could have it done. Um, my concern with that was I had to make sure that I would dry foot it when I glazed it then. And so um, if I was going to do that carrot, I would pick one of the oranges um, and some greens on there to do to, to finish the carrot. But I did this one with acrylics because I had to quick get it done. All right. And then the wire, it's just a, a black craft wire that I put into his nose and just dipped it in glue and stuck that into the openings on there. All right. Let me bring the leprechaun back up here. So the leprechaun um, is a little bit different. The hair is a little bit different. Um, instead of making a bunny nose on there, um, I rolled a ball of clay and decided where that nose was gonna go. And I scored and slipped that nose on. And the, the rim of the hat, I kind of went back and I kind of bent the edges of this upward. And for the hair, I just took and pinched off pieces of clay, again, about the same thickness between a quarter to a half an inch thick. And I pinched off pieces and I decided kind of where his face is gonna be. And so I went around and I just kind of drew a line of where I wanted his face to be. And I took these pieces of clay and I placed them around that area. And I kind of mashed it into the face. And this is going to be his beard. And I'll just do a small section of this. I won't do the whole beard, but I would continue with these pieces of clay going around to the other side. And then I just took my wooden, basic wooden tool that comes in a basic pottery set. And I kind of hold on behind those pieces. And I took that tool and I just scratched the texture for that hair in his beard. and just work my way around all of those pieces that I added on to make that beard. On the back of his head, I did several layers and I'll show before we, we end, I did layers. So I started out on the bottom with some pieces like I just did on the beard. I did some on the bottom and then I built up ones going up above that to make hair on the back. To do his top hat, I took and flattened out, and you can do this rolling like a slab of clay. 
Um, or you can just do like I'm gonna do here and just flatten out a piece again, about the same thickness between a quarter to a half an inch thick and decide how big you want the top of the top hat to be. Cut out a circle. And you could use, you know, if you wanna have a perfect circle, you could use something like a lid to a container um, to, to use as a template on there. And then I want to cut out a hole in the middle that will be how far down I want it to come on the top of the hat. So I'm going to cut out a hole about this size. And before I start adding this on, I'm going to go through and I'm going to poke some holes to vent where I'm going to be covering this now with his, his top hat down below where this ring is going to fit on the top. I'll move this camera up a little. So regardless of what camera Kevin has. And so this is going to be the top of his top hat. And I'm going to take and squish that in just like I did the rim of the hat to attach it. And then I can take the top of this and I can kind of pinch and pull and twist this around. And then I'm basically going to take a slab of clay and I didn't roll out a slab ahead of time, but I'm just going to flatten the piece here. I would do a slab that would fit around this area. I'll just take this, this piece and pretend this is a full slab. And I would take and attach that, cut it off to the right size. And I would wrap that slab around and I would bring it up and I would squish it into the top of his top hat and then mash it into the bottom of his hat and do that all the way around to enclose that hat on there. Um, and that's how easy it is. And it's not that different other than really the hat on here and the hair is a little bit different. So let me bring that leprechaun up here so you guys can see it better. And I tried to dry him really fast and I got a little bit of cracking in him as well, but um, you can see the, the hair on the back here, get in that camera, kind of how I did the layers on there. Oh, and I forgot, I did add ears in here too. Here I'm trying to hurry up and, and show this. I did. Uh, you still some got little... seven minutes. So yeah, so I did some little good. pointed ears. Let me get that up to the camera here so you can see his little pointed ear. And so that was just taking clay and I actually did this before the beard, and I kind of did a pointed ear, tapered the edges, kind of like the bunny ear, but a much smaller version. And then when I, when I attached that, I kind of put it in there, and I again squished the clay and mashed it into his face. Um, on the hat, you can see I did a little belt of clay around here. So in with the extruder, with the Nedic um, extruder, you get there's a ribbon die. And so you can squeeze out a ribbon. Um, depending on the size, you may end up cutting that ribbon in half. So I used half of it for the ribbon on his hat. And then on the bottom, I also did a little belt that went around his waist. His hands, you can see, are they start out basically like the paw that I did on the bunny. But then I took the needle tool and I cut into it to make the fingers. So if this was the shape that I had for the hand, then I'd go back and I would cut one, two, three, four, five, and pull these apart and pinch them and kind of round them off. And I can take the wooden tool in between those fingers and kind of press that down and, and kind of work and shape these. And again, the same as the bunny paws, I do it a little bit longer. I poke the hole in the side and then I insert that hand and then work the fingers and get them to be the shape that I want and bend the thumb around to get that hand. The shoes were just taking a piece of clay and forming the shoes. And I'll hold that up here so you can kind of see. There's a little buckle 
on the shoe. You can kind of see that in the overhead camera. When I hold that up, I put a little buckle on each shoe. I did a little buckle just with a flat piece of clay and cutting out the middle and did like the little metal thing that would go through the loops on the belt. Same thing on the hat. And then the little shamrocks were just a shamrock cookie cutter that I had. And then I just slipped and scored those on as well. So I think that's everything on there. And we've got, what, four minutes left? Four minutes. <clears throat> Tell All us right. how you're going to glaze it. That's what we So I'm probably going to work with stroke and coat on here too. Um, or I may look at some of the other pottery glazes that I've got. I, I'm not absolutely certain what I'll do on the finishes on here, but I, I can picture the, the hair. I'm going to want kind of a reddish color. So I'll probably brush the red like stroke and coat on there and wipe it back a little bit with a damp sponge um, and then pick out some greens and some flesh color and stuff to, to be able to finish that piece off and some black on the, the bands. I might even do fired gold overglaze on the buckles, which would be really cool on there as well. I do want to show you guys, awesome. if, if, unless if there's a ton of questions, I just, I fired the pieces from the other workshops last night. And I had said I was going to do um, some stuff on Paula's colors. So this was the, the tray that, that I did the other day in the stamping class. I got that glazed and fired. Um, that, I think, turned out great. And then this was the, the little bowl sample that I had before. This was the one that we did in the class. And then I banded yesterday in the banding class. That turned out great. And then yesterday when I did the banding, we talked about the purples. And I wanted to see how the purples came out. I did a cone five firing. Paula did a cone six firing last night and got good results. This was using Mako's um, clear glazes over Paula's Colors for Earth Colors. This half that's a little bit lighter, this was done using the zinc-free clear of Mako. And this side was done using the um, just the regular clear of Mako. And the colors came out a lot brighter with just the regular glaze versus the zinc free but the purples held up really well at cone five and, and came out nice um, i'm going to put this one back in on another firing and i'm going to do a cone six and just see if that makes much of a difference um, with those colors on there it turned out fabulous and if you all missed those broadcasts they are available for replay so you can go back and watch the banding methods and the stamping on pottery so those are there and you can see the beginning of those pieces that you now saw the finished. And so uh, question, how do you keep the glaze from getting where you don't want it when you're painting so many different colors? Um, you know, I start out like on the bunny, I started out with the wash of the gray because that's really fluid. I do like half water, half color, and that kind of runs all over. And then I can easily sponge that off. Um, when I was doing the bunny, you know, there were, when I was getting back behind the ears and I was painting the hat back there, I kind of keep that stuff in mind when I'm creating the clay piece. So I look at it and go, okay, will I be able to get in there with a brush? And so, you know, keep that in mind as you're creating your pieces that you're going to need to paint it. And if you make such tight spots that you can't get in there, um, but there were a couple spots where I had to go back and wipe off some glaze. But for the most part, I really didn't have many problems with, with that. But I started out with the, the, the hair and the grays and the whites on this guy. And then um, did uh, the, the other colors just over that. So it really wasn't a problem on there. Fantastic. And so then some folks are asking, is it possible for you to do a live glazing when these are ready to be glazed? I could do that, yeah, because both of these are, are going to need to get finished, and maybe I'll do that on one of my, um, one, one of my Wednesday Night Lives. That would be a, a good yeah, one to finish these. You don't want to do it on yours? You can come on Clay Share and do it on one of, do it there. Your we call. could do that, too. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah I'd love to do that. And, and so if anybody, if anybody's wondering about, um, I, I see a lot of people asking about coupon codes and stuff. We didn't do coupon codes this year. Um, last year, we had a lot of people that forgot to put the code in or the code didn't work and we'd have to go back and do credit. So we created a whole page, a whole section for the Clay Share Conference of pretty much all the stuff that I'm using in my workshops. And you can find that at learnfiredarts.com. So you don't need to worry about a code. Um, the sale prices are all there. And then we've got free shipping on any orders over $50 um, domestically. 
Um, for Hawaii and Alaska, it needs to fit in the flat rate shipping box, but for everybody else, it, it's free shipping over $50. And if you're international, we've got the website set up that international customers can just go in and enter their order and it'll tell you what the shipping is going to be. So, and, and you guys have been absolutely awesome with the orders that have already come in. And I really appreciate that. And, and we're a little better prepared this time than we were last year for this. So had a little bit more notice. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Michael. I know I'm really inspired by what you've shown us the last few days and uh, can't wait to make myself a little bunny and a little leprechaun gnome too. So everyone, remember, you can catch this replay. So if you joined at the end and you didn't see what was going on and you were like, wait, what's that? What's happening? And it, it, go back, watch the replay, and then you'll know. And so you'll have that. And you can always go back and review these. Now, Michael does live tutorials on his site. So if you're on Facebook, find Michael. It's Michael Harbridge. His website is learnfiredarts.com. So I should say the live tutorials on his Facebook page. And his website, learnfiredarts.com, is where you can buy tons of pottery supplies. He sells everything out there. So check that out. We are doing specials for ClayShareCon. So if you go to ClayShareCon.com and you click through the sponsor discounts and promo section, you can see all the discounts that are available. And, and there's a link to Michael's page there too, but you can just go directly to his page. And as he said, the discounts already applied. No code needed. All right, so we have a little bit of a schedule change I want to go over with everybody. Originally tonight we were going to be doing the giveaways and cocktail hour at 5.30, but sadly that's been postponed, as has been the after party with the Raku firing with Clayscapes, because we are in the middle of a huge winter storm. Uh, I don't know if you follow the weather, but here in the Northeast, uh, we're in Vermont, Clayscapes is in New York, we are socked in. We are getting tons of snow. It started last night. I could not leave my house to go get the cocktail party supplies. And Clayscapes cannot do a Raku firing in the middle of a snowstorm. So we've postponed that till Sunday, and those schedule changes will be up on Claysharecon.com, and I'll post it on social media as well. And we'll just have it, just not tonight. So I will be back at 5.30 with the giveaways, though. So that is happening. Don't worry. And while we have Michael here, I'm going to throw out the fact that he has donated a $25 gift certificate to Learn Fired Arts. So you could get yourself some awesome products and maybe make yourself a bunny and a leprechaun as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this broadcast. We'll be 